Kenneth is a 72-year-old Marine. He had been battling with CKD for three years when he received a call from his clinic. I got a call from the clinic one day and it was the nurse who said, I just want to let you know that your results came back and everything is normal. He didn't have CKD anymore. This is how he did it. Catherine here, I've been working with people suffering from kidney issues for more than 10 years now. And you know, it's always a great joy for me when one of you guys contacts me to share their success story. And Kenneth Story, who contacted me on the comment section of YouTube, is especially interesting. He was diagnosed with CKD stage 3B, probably caused by diabetes and with high blood pressure. But instead of losing hope, he started to get informed. He made changes to his lifestyle. And he consulted a dietitian who gave him a new diet and one just one supplement to control both his insulin resistance and help his kidneys. And this made a huge difference with his GFR. His numbers went from 43, stage 3B, to 62, stage 2, which is an incredible achievement. He has a GFR of 62 now, which will be great for someone his age, even for someone without any previous history of diabetes or CKD. But Kenneth had been battling with CKD for three years. This is why I asked him if he liked to be interviewed. So today's video is all about his journey and how he was able to go from stage 3B to stage 2 in just six months. We'll learn more about him and his journey today. And if you think this is interesting, consider giving this video a like. Let's start now. Kenneth, can you tell us a little bit about your story? How did you find out you had kidney disease? Well, now, about three years ago, I got myself a surprise that I never saw coming. Found out I had CKD. I went in for a routine checkup and had some lab work done. And my doctor, a military physician, called me when the results of the lab came back. Now, in my experience, a call from the doc is never to invite you to a picnic. And he told me, well, Kenneth, I don't know if you knew this, but you have stage 3B kidney disease. Hearing that hit me like a ton of bricks. It sounded awful, but it was unbelievable because I didn't have any symptoms that I was aware of and I always had my diabetes under control. Yes, that sounds really scary. Thank you for sharing with us. But you are better now, so tell us what you did to improve. I bet my public really wants to know. Well, first, I asked the military physician. I asked him straight up, what can we do about this mess? And he says to me, Kenneth, there ain't a whole lot we can do, but we can do some things to sort of slow it down and one of the things that we can do is giving you something for your pressure. He wasn't joking around either, said my body was getting too acidic for his liking and it was high time we did something about it. Prior to him saying that I was just taking a supplement to control my pressure and for a while it worked. But then suddenly it didn't work anymore and my pressure started creeping up. At that point, I had a choice. I could hold my stubborn position of not going on medication or I could say, all right, I may have to make a sacrifice here. I choose to make the sacrifice go on on the hypertension medicine so that I could slow this process down. Until I found something that will be more in line with the way I like to take care of myself. And you found a more natural way eventually. Yes, I did. I left this office that day and I thought there is something out there that will help me. I started searching on the internet and that's how I found your YouTube channel, by the way. That's how I found out more about kidney disease and I've understood that it's something that is treatable. I've understood that it's something that can be reversed. 
I got very excited about it. So is this how you found out about the supplement that helped you? Well, no. Actually, following your advice, I ended up scheduling an appointment with a renal dietitian in my area and he gave me my new diet. He told me to take the magnesium citrate for my diabetes. Okay, this is, well, surprising, but I'm glad you follow my advice and you were able to find the help you needed and you think that made the difference? Yes, I think so. I kept taking the same medications I was taking three years ago. They didn't help until I found something more effective. And how did you find out that your new diet and supplementation was working? I got a call from the folks over at the military dog's place. Always a moment to hold your breath getting that call because that's how they pass along the test results. You don't have to go into the clinic to get the results unless, of course, there is a problem. But so I got a call from the clinic one day and it was the nurse who said, I just want to let you know that your results came back and everything is normal. She didn't actually go into what the specific test results were, so I asked her, what about my GFR? She says, oh, that's 62. I said, oh, good, what about my creatinine? That's 1.05. I hung up that phone and let me tell you, I couldn't help but let out a big old yes. Okay, this is amazing. Huge congratulations on your achievement. Can you tell us more about what changes you made in your diet and lifestyle? Yes, he gave me a diet to manage my diabetes. He said it was high time I gave my food habits a good hard look. So I started swapping things out, began eating more fresh greens and natural stuff. He strongly suggested cutting out the meat and protein, anything loaded with sodium or sugar. And on top of that, he wanted me to drink more water. I won't lie, it was a bit of a challenge to get started. But then, as I followed through, I started losing some pounds and my GFR numbers began to look better. His advice was to steer clear of sweets, start my mornings with oatmeal and incorporate avocados and olives into my lunch, perhaps with some bulgur. He even gave me a list of snacks, unsalted almonds, blueberries, and said I could eat as much cauliflower and cabbage as I wanted. And he suggested sprinkling flax seeds on my meals. The latest addition to my routine was starting on magnesium citrate. It's a different way of living, but I can't deny it's doing me good. Kenneth, thank you very much for sharing your story with us. And guys, I want to break down a little bit the foods and supplements his renal dietitian prescribed him. So let's start from the diet. What kind of diet can help someone with diabetes and kidney disease? Now, I really like some of the recommendations this dietitian gave him. For example, blueberries. These are packed with antioxidants, fiber and vitamin C, but are low glycemic index, which means they won't spike sugar levels. Absolutely great! And also, oatmeal. I love when dietitians tell people to eat such a simple food, but so full of health benefits. Whole grains are high in fiber and can definitely help control sugar levels. They also contribute to a feeling of fullness, which can help maintain the right weight. Oatmeal also comes with a less known benefit. Oats are rich in beta-glucans, a powerful soluble fiber. Beta-glucan partially dissolves in water and forms a thick gel-like solution in your gut. Great to get rid of extra cholesterol and even some toxins while helping your gut health. A bit like acacia fiber but on a smaller scale. However, oats may even help reduce sugar levels and they are a great breakfast. And I see that his dietitian also told him to eat avocado. I know that this may be still controversial for some, but today we know very well that if your potassium levels are not too high already, eating bananas, avocados, and potatoes will not make a difference about that. And eating avocado also comes with several health benefits. 
Avocados are rich in vitamin C, E, K, and B6, as well as riboflavin, niacin, folate, pantothenic acid, and magnesium. They truly are nutrition powerhouses. Avocados are also so rich in antioxidant and anti-inflammatory compounds. They can protect from oxidative damage, which is associated with the progression of diseases. Avocados are also very rich in a special type of fat known as medium-chain triglycerides or MCTs. And MCTs are so healthy for the kidneys, especially in case of diabetes, that you can also get them in oil form to supplement your diet. Studies say they may improve insulin resistance and help overweight people lose weight. Now, before adding avocados to your diet, make sure they are safe for you. And I've talked more in depth about who can have more potassium and who should be careful in my video up here and also down in the description. Another high fat food that Kenneth mentioned are olives. Maybe not the easiest to find fresh, but if you can find them, olives are amazing. Just like olive oil, they have been shown to really help with insulin sensitivity. They have a substance called olerpain, which can help control your blood sugar levels after meals, especially if you have diabetes or insulin resistance. Yes, olives are great, just like olive oil, but with way less calories. Not to mention their incredible anti-inflammatory effect. Amazing! Now his doctor even recommended flax seeds. I love these small seeds. They actually come with an incredible benefit. Flax seeds are incredibly anti-inflammatory and this property can really help. Eating flax seed regularly protects the kidneys, especially in those with inflammatory kidney disease. There are studies showing that flax seed can improve GFR in this case, thanks to its impressive anti-inflammatory properties. And guys, I bet adding these foods can be beneficial for anyone, but please consult your nephrologist or your dietitian before making any change to your diet. However, this is not all. Kenneth also mentioned one supplement that, according to his dietitian, has made a huge difference. This is a special type of magnesium that some nephrologists are starting to recommend, which is called magnesium citrate. Question. What's so special about magnesium citrate? Magnesium citrate supplementation could potentially have significant benefits for those with kidney issues for three reasons. First of all, there is vascular calcification, a common complication of CKD. This is linked to magnesium deficiency and anything that can help it is great. Keep in mind that having low magnesium can cause a cascade of problems, including a possible worsening in phosphorus levels and even in parathyroid hormone levels. Second, taking magnesium may be very useful for insulin resistance. Studies are linking magnesium deficiency, again, very common especially in people with diabetes, to insulin resistance. It has also been observed that correcting magnesium levels improve insulin sensitivity and metabolic control in people with diabetes. And it's not all. Magnesium citrate helps with metabolic acidosis and that could be a huge help for people with kidney problems. Why is metabolic acidosis so important? Metabolic acidosis is a complication of kidney disease, especially common in those with diabetes, that's also known to make kidney disease progress faster. Managing body acidity, a job the kidneys are tasked to do, is a central point in managing kidney disease. The plant-based diet works also because it's way less acid-forming than a regular Western diet. But for many patients, the diet isn't enough. Their body are still too acidic and they are usually given sodium bicarbonate. Now, magnesium citrate may be also considered for the purpose of controlling metabolic acidosis. So, we could consider it a sodium-free alternative to sodium bicarbonate. So, in my opinion, his dietitian discovered that they could have solved two problems with only one supplement magnesium deficiency and metabolic acidosis, which could be amazing because, as we have seen, correcting these two issues can make a huge difference. Now guys, I also want to let you know that while magnesium citrate seems to have really helped Kenneth, it's not a magic pill. 
And while magnesium is usually safe, I would recommend to work with your nephrologist and have a red cell magnesium test to see what your magnesium levels are. As long as you don't have issues with magnesium levels, you shouldn't have problems with supplementing it. Okay guys, if you want to know more about how to manage diabetes, this video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all.